some video feed as well. Hey, this is Jim with the Kingsman Podcast coming right back at you from nowhere. Nowhere, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> you won't find that on the map. But really, I do live in the middle of nowhere, and it is the greatest place on earth. Let me turn down this music just a tad bit. <sighs> so, guys, how are you doing? Text me, call me, email me, leave me comments. Let me know how you're doing. Is this podcast helping you? Is it not helping you? Is this a total waste of time? Are you not enter- Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? And then, you know, when you look out at this at the world, you have to either laugh or you have to cry. <clears throat> so, and let's just get right into it. The news and information that affects men everywhere and specifically the church. <clears throat> the church is the moral foundation of our society. People don't understand that. They don't realize that. Here we live in an atheistic society that now all of a sudden we're doing all of these things like animals. Well, if you teach our children that they come from animals, why are you surprised when they begin to act like animals? The contradictory stupidity that comes from the atheist foundation. That's exactly what that is. So, a 16-year-old fatally stabbed, fatally stabbed, he was stabbed in the chest multiple times, all at the same time, that while this happened, you think uh, they called an ambulance? You think they, uh, you think uh, the other 50 teenagers that were standing around this, this, this boy that was stabbed, you think they did anything? Well, they took video. They got it on Facebook. You know, all these stories are available on my website, truthbombs.wordpress.com, truthbombs.wordpress.com. A fight over a girl. Guys, never fight over a girl. Don't do it. They are not worth it. Absolutely not. Never, ever fight over a girl because a girl, especially when you're young, there is no rationality. When you when you ha- you have not disciplined yourself just yet to be an adult, so never when you're young. Never fight over a girl, especially when you're young. Especially when you're young. But never fight over a girl. Anyway, but especially when you're young, don't even try it. Don't don't even try because it's not worth the time. It is not worth the effort. You move on. There are plenty of other fish in the sea. So this uh, 18-year-old was stabbed in the chest many times. And teens, other teens, about 50 of them, just stood there watching him bleed out. What kind of a moral society are we living in? That... That's this is what is happening. It, <laughs> you don't do anything to help your fellow man. Love thy neighbor as their, as thy as thyself. They don't teach that in schools. No, they teach that you come from monkeys. And what do monkeys do? They fling crap at you at the zoo. That's what they do. <clears throat> so here we are living in a society that refuses to adhere to really any moral code and is becoming more and more violent. And it really is no. Uh, it's no surprise. It is absolutely no surprise. Also, when it, on the other story, because it's it's no surprise, when, whenever you look at our society, think about this, how do we treat, treat our elderly and our children? The most defenseless people in our society, how do we treat them? Well, that is the measure of who we are as a civilized uh, society. And this really is a problem. Uh, Dr. Kathy Altman told cnsnews.com that as a society, quote, we have been so blinded by the abortion rhetoric that now letting babies die after they are born doesn't seem bad either. And that's where we are. These partially, uh, where they're born and then they kill them, that's ridiculous. Where a doctor is sitting there looking at a human life and taking that life no one sees a problem with this. The desensitization of our doctors and healthcare system. This, this. You only have to look at history of those that did not value human life and what happened over time to that society. This is the world that we are faced with. This is the world that we are faced with. Now, here, now I live in Pennsylvania, as, as I said, nowhere Pennsylvania. Just across the border to our neighbors in Ohio, man, over 100 people were arrested in Ohio for human sex trafficking. 
Child sex sting is what happened right here in Ohio. Now that's a that's most of Ohio is a Plains state. What is going on? I mean, I just over the last few years, you've heard about the sex trafficking rings in Texas and California along the border states where they're kidnapping American girls and they end up being a sex slave. And that is horrible, absolutely horrible. And you hear about that, I used to only hear about that overseas. It makes movies. But here in the United States, and we're not doing anything about this? There are people getting away with this. These are serious problems. Serious problems that are happening in our society. And what are we going to do about it? What exactly are we going to do about it? Now, today, this is um, the boy crisis, part three. Toi. Under toi. I took four years of French in high school. That's the only thing I really remember. The boy crisis, part three. Uh, there is, we have been talking about male suicide and the male suicide rate. Suicide is such a... It's, 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 it's horrible. It is absolutely horrible. And 70% of the suicides that happen in the United States are white men. The stress that is put on the white man, and now really being a white male is under fire by the liberal media. You should be ashamed of yourself for being a white man. And as if the suicide rate wasn't bad enough already, the liberal media is just going to add that to us. And there is liberals, liberals out there that say, okay, that's good. Let the white man die. That's the people that built this country, those ideas, and how heartless. Well, if you believe you came from animals, well, I guess you shouldn't have a problem with thinking about how, how bad it is if white men die. Now, a lot of this stuff is coming from the book of uh, The Boy Crisis from Dr. Warren Farrell. But also, this is not just a U.S. problem. This is a problem that happens also uh, overseas as well. It is a crisis of a global uh, scope, and we have to remember that. We cannot allow it just to just for boys to be affected here. How many men do you think die by suicide each day in the UK? Have a guess. Raise your hand if you think it's under five. Now, this is from a TED Talk. One man every two hours. This is in the UK. Enjoying our day. We're going to lose 12 men to suicide today. In my work, we talk a lot about the fact that 76% of all suicides are male. And that 76 percent More men under 45 than anything else. And I can't help but find myself asking, why is that? Doesn't that trouble you? Because it troubles me. It troubles me. And I'm sure you know some men out there. Now, these are problems. These are problems, and these are worldwide problems. Worldwide problems. Uh, if uh, you if you're watching online, yeah, that's uh, it's stink bug season here in Pennsylvania. You guys just don't know how bad that can that can really be up here in Pennsylvania. Um, and sometimes they get into the house, so they get through the air conditioning system. It's it's ridiculous. But, you know, and Warren Farrell, uh, he talks about this to great extent in his book. I encourage you to go ahead and read that. Uh, but there is this horrible crisis, and it's not just suicide. It's also economic. Uh, and it will affect our society globally. So here's more on Dr. Farrell. Uh, from Fox News, uh, from his interview whenever he did his book. You know pretty conclusively that men in America and in other developed countries are falling behind women uh, in a lot of different measures. To what extent is fatherlessness driving that, do you think? 
a, a, a great extent. They're falling behind women in all 63 leading 63 uh, nations, leading developed nations. Developed nations. In developed nations, there's the permission for divorce that there isn't in non-developed, less developed nations, and also in developed nations, there's, there's the permission for women to marry, um, to to have children without being married. That's for you and, guys who are uh, and watching on a YouTube. Huge division between boys and um, a, a, a division of boys who are with their fathers. Yes. do quite well uh, boys who are not with so their boys who do terribly whose father is involved in their life they do much better measures of um, uh, measures like um, postponed gratification um, the ability to be de whether or not they're depressed whether or not they're drinking whether or not they have drugs uh, the opioid drugs crisis, alcohol opioids people work ethic all of that ISIS recruits all over the world they're almost completely fatherless boys and the ones that and you see how Dr. Farrow really puts all of this out, all of these negative measurements that we look at, uh, delayed gratification, that, that, what that equates to is how likely are you to build up a huge amount of debt in your life and not be able to pay it back? That, these are serious problems. Uh, ISIS, ISIS recruits specifically targets people who do, who, men who do not have father, father figures or fathers in their lives. These are serious, serious problems. I got a little bit more from uh, Dr. Farrell. So we have suicide problems. We have economic problems. We have uh, opioid addiction. We have financial, uh, personal financial problems. All because the father is not involved in the child's lives. It's a boy crisis. It absolutely is a boy crisis. And we need to do something about it. We can't... The evidence we'll be seeing is that for the first time... In U.S. history, our sons will have less education than their dads. Now it's an education problem. If we take this worldwide, the U.N. found this year that boys have fallen behind girls in every single one of the 70 developed nations. So what do developed nations have in common? They have in common a much greater propensity for divorce. Yeah. Leaving divorce. boys oftentimes without their dads. So dad-deprived boys becomes the number one cause of the boy crisis. And now it's something like 70% that the women uh, ask for the, ask for divorces. And this is no-fault divorces. It's, so there there aren't going to be any charges of, of, oh, he cheated on me or things like that. And most and this is also the first time in history that the uh, our statistics are showing. And this is all due to social media. The statistics are showing that more women are are becoming um, uh, 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 adulterous. That's the biblical word to use. Is becoming adulterous because of social media. Uh, one uh, one commentator that that I read in regards to uh, what he says a smartphone is just a box of penises. He didn't use that word, but that is the anatomically correct word to use. Uh, it, and I'm trying to keep this all clean for YouTube. So, this is what is happening in our society. And and over and over again, and the law sides with female children do not have that influence that is needed by their fathers. But let's continue on to even more information. Now, this is uh, John Stossel in his report. Parenting author Ashley Merriman argues that... Let me start this over. This is John Stossel uh, doing a report on Fox Business News, um, Grow Up Parenting Wars. This is a book uh, that he did an interview for talking about children. Everybody gets a trophy, and what are the ramifications of everybody getting a trophy? Let's listen. Everybody got a trophy. I'm sorry. And they... They seem happy. <laughs> Parenting author Ashley Merriman argues that giving everyone a prize is bad for kids. I'm told it's good to praise kids, make them feel good about themselves. The research has actually found the opposite, that when kids are told they're wonderful, they are worried that the next time they try something, they'll screw up. 40 years ago, though. Yeah. And... And we're just now starting to see all that stuff that came back from the 80s, you know, just be yourself, follow your heart, and all this other um, bull, bull, all of that stuff, it's just now coming out how damaging it really has been in our society. Now, <laughs> and the statistics are real for us to see that. So let's go back. I got another 20-second clip here for 
um, from John Stossel, from this report that you need to, to, to listen to. Competition. Competition's bad. But now the research is in. Boosting self-esteem may be counterproductive. It does not improve academic performance. Kids with low self-esteem who get this overinflated praise, overinflated encouragement, become more reticent to try things in the future. They avoid challenges instead of go in front of them. She says, so if you if you praise your children for every little thing out there for for average for average performance they're not going to try anything more. Hey, they received their esteem. They received their praise. They're not going to try. They're not going to take risks. They're not going to progress forward. They're going to sit in their house because they don't believe that they have to do anything more. This is what the data is showing and well, go figure. The conservatives have been sell saying this for, I, I can't not remember how many years. But this is the truth of our lives that we are living in. Uh, for the past 40 years, the median annual earnings of a boy with just a high school diploma dropped 26%. 26% over the past 40 years. It's dropped 26%. And, and so, oh, this is wage gap equality and, and all of this stuff. There is no, wa there is no wage gap. Now, we're not talking about that where I, I would have video proof, I would have evidence, I'd, I'd have all of that stuff. But we're not talking, we're not talking about this the so-called wage gap that doesn't really exist. What we're talking about is how, the specifically, for men, the men who only have a high school diploma, they are earning less and less and less. Why? Because we are moving from a industrial-based society. We have been for uh, 30 years or more from an industrial-based society into a microchip type society, an information-based society. So it's muscle to microchip, as Dr. Warren talks about in his book. It's muscle to microchip. How are these kids, with without the information technology education, are they going to compete in this world? How are they going to fend for their families? How are they going to be supportive of the generation that is dying? How are they going to be supportive of our country? How are they going to... How? 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 You can't. Now, without a diploma, his chance of being unemployed during his prime working years, that's 25 to 54, is 20%. you got 20% chance of being unemployed with only a high school diploma between those years. Almost 400% greater than the average. Greater than the average. Man. Worldwide, boys are 50% more likely than girls to fail to meet basic proficiency in any of the three core subjects, that's reading, math, and science. Boys are falling behind, and, and, and we don't care. No, we just give them Ritalin. We give them uh, ADHD medication, and we throw them into the corner. And over and over again, teachers, when they describe their ideal student, it's a female. How does that make boys feel? Did you ever have your kid come home and say, I don't think my teacher likes me? Well, that's why. They just want to teach girls. Because girls are more agreeable. That's according to Dr. Jordan Peterson in his clinical studies. Now, the next thing is we have taught our, our men and our children, our boys, we have taught them, we have programmed them since they were young to be disposable. Now, this was a revelation. I, I never had thought about this before until I read Dr. Warren's material. We are treated as disposable. And that is so disrespectful. And I think, I think disrespect is the thing that men hate the most in life, is being disrespected. But the truth is, yeah, in order to win wars, we had to train our sons to be disposable, to give their lives for their society, freely and voluntarily. And even today, the draft, the draft is only for boys, only for men. A woman does not have to sign up. Yes, they are putting women in combat zones, and we are seeing now that those women that go into those combat zones have now an equal rate of suicide because the stress that has always been put upon men throughout the history of humanity is now put on women, and they cannot cope. They cannot cope. Yeah, this is, this is the problems that we have in our lives. And my brothers, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about this? 
Men, we need to unite. We come together and we work out our problems. First off, we need a support group. Uh, contact me, email me, message me. I'll listen. I may not be able to help you, but I will listen. And maybe, maybe we can get through this together, guys. Guys, thanks for listening. I don't want this. I don't want to end my podcast on a, on a on a depressing note. Absolutely not, guys. We can do this. We can unite ourselves together. We can move forward. We will not go gently into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light, my brothers. Rage. All right, guys. We will talk to you next week. <laughs>